Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. Here are the instructions for finishing the quilt. It's the cornerstones, sashing, and borders. This didn't change. This was in week five, I believe. And then, but this changed because I realized I skipped a step in the borders. So I thought it would be better just to combine them and you can use, you can download these and you'll have both of them together because it's basically the same. I just added one more thing for the borders because I put the instructions for just a straight border and I forgot that we had little cornerstones in the corners. Let's go over these again. You, you've already seen these probably, but they'll just go over it again quickly. Here are the how many cornerstones you need and you make 20 of those. You cut 31 sashings and you make four border corners. These are all the patches for all of those, for the cornerstones, the border corners, and the sashing, and the cutting instructions for all of them. Now for the border, you have two choices to cut. You can cut on the crosswise grain, that's from selvage to selvage, and piece those when you make the border. Or I'm going to show you how you can cut lengthwise borders. You don't have to piece those. It takes a little bit extra fabric, but you're also going to cut the binding out of that if you want to make the binding the same as the border. Here is the final diagram, and you can put these blocks however you like. So now the first thing we're going to do to complete the quilt top is to make the horizontal sashings. You can press the seams open or the, in the direction of your choice. And I chose to press always toward the sashing. I think it will be easier to put the quilt together that way, but you can press however you like. We're first going to sew five horizontal rows of cornerstones and sashing. Then we're going to sew our blocks in a row with the sashing. Then we'll sew all of the sashing and cornerstone rows to all of the block rows. Then we'll have the inside of the quilt top finished and we'll add the borders next. Now for adding the borders, since we have our little corner square on point, what we're going to first do is measure the top of the quilt and the bottom of the quilt just as it is. So it's before the borders. And we'll take the average number of that and we'll cut the top and bottom borders that size. Then we'll sew on to the top and bottom borders. The On each end we'll sew the border corners. So we'll have that for the top and bottom. But we're not going to put those on yet. Then we're going to measure the length of both sides of the quilt top and take the average. Cut our two border strips for the length that size. Then we'll attach the side borders and press those seams, then we'll attach our already made top and bottom borders and that should finish the quilt. All right, now it's time to put this quilt together. I have mine on my design wall. This is the design wall curtain that I did a review of about a week ago and I didn't realize that it wasn't, the product wasn't out yet and I soon discovered that it's probably going to be out next month. This is November. It's probably going to be out in December. So I apologize for that. I thought it was already out. So anyway, that's the design wall curtain I have in my new place. I have the blocks laid out just like in my final picture. So what I've done is, the, if you see the very top row is sashing and cornerstones. And what I'm going to suggest you do first is you're do, going to do these horizontal rows of sashing and cornerstones and there are five of them so you should have 20 of the square on point cornerstones and then your sashings that you cut i can't remember how many those are so i have those laid out between the rows and i'll show you some of my sashings up close so what we're going to do next is sew the the vertical sashings here between on the sides and between all of these blocks. And then we'll have rows. We'll have five horizontal sashing rows and then we'll have the four rows of blocks and we'll put those all together 
and then we'll put the border on and I'll show you how to cut those if you want to cut the lengthwise grain. If you want to see my new setup here, it's a little bit different. I'm upstairs and have dormers up there. There's my little ironing station is where the camera is and my cutting board. And so it's still a little bit messy. I haven't really gotten everything perfect yet. Let me show you the horizontal sashings and cornerstones. Here's one of these horizontal sashing rows. Now, if you are like me and you don't have every one of these square on points coming out perfectly, this is how you correct as you're sewing these together. I'm, I won't call it mistakes, I'll just call it problems. <laughs> so you can see, here's my sashing. And I know this is cut exactly at three and a half inches. I've measured all of them. And I was really careful when I was cutting them. But you'll see, this is slightly smaller up here and down here. And here's where I split the difference when I laid it down next to the sashing to sew it together. And see, I tried to get my points looking nice and pretty on this side. This side's better than that side. So when you split the difference, then everything lays flat. And this one, this one was a lot different. I don't know how this happened. I was kind of frustrated during this whole thing with these square on points. I could do one square on point and it would come out just wonderful. It would be so nice and flat and, and all the points were where they should be. And then at other times I would just struggle with it and I'd have to do them over and over again. So I was a little bit frustrated with the square on points. This is how you make these corrections when you're sewing them together. Make sure your sashing is the right size and you can always go off the sashing. Here they are, here's the last two. You saw three of them on the design wall and here's number four and it's pressed toward the sashing on both, all of them. And then number five is this one. So do that. That's step number one is to get your sash, your horizontal sashings done. Then after that, we're going to sew our vertical sashings on each side of the row and in between the blocks. Then we're going to stitch the rows of sashing to the rows of blocks. Now I'm going to show you how I pin these, this uh, horizontal sashing to the block rows. I like to have this pieced part next to the feed dogs because I think it helps to ease in the areas that need easing in. And I start by pinning the seam lines. And since I've pressed toward the sashing, so it's pressed this way here and that way here, these seams interlock. You can see that this is not even over here, but I made sure it was flat. This lines up here and then I just make sure it lays flat. Because if you move it around, like if you try to make it work this way, you see it distorts all this. Look for a place that you know is correct. So I know this is right, and I, I want it to line up here. And I just let this lay and fall however it will. There is going to be enough room in the seam allowance when I start sewing that. Then I go to the next seam line, which is over here, and pin that, and that's laying nice. And then if I look over here, these are two points that I need to match. You can see them here. And I just put my pin in from the back where I could see where the point was, and then wherever it came in the front, I just left it there. And did the same thing over here. So every time when I'm stitching, I stitch from this end to this pin, then from pin to pin, every time, pin to pin. And this distance, that's the only thing you're worried about at the time. You want to make sure it's flat, and then if there's any easing that needs to be done, you just ease between the pins. So continue like that all the way down. Start with your seam lines, and then go to your points that you need to mark. Well, when I stitch this, I have these seam lines at the bottom next to the feed dogs. So that helps to ease in anything that needs to be eased. So I'll start here, just put my needle down and take a few stitches, then take this pin out. So then I'm using this as my quarter inch guide. 
this is the sashing underneath and I'm sort of aiming for this point but if it's too far away from the quarter inch then I won't hit it I'll just keep the keep the quarter inch where it is and then aim for this seam line and take the pin out before I get there and then do the same thing with this I'll start aiming for this part here right where the pin goes into the fabric that's where the tip is so when I as I'm getting closer I'll take this pin out and then when I'm close enough I'll just let it come out and then stitch right there where that little hole is there's a little hole from you can see from where the pin was I never stitch over the pins and I try to take them out before I reach them and then you'll just go from this pin to this pin and do the same thing I want to go just above that point so you just continue that way all the way down the length of this until you get to the end and then stitch off the end and then what I will do is press this toward the sashing so I'll press all this way even this part here I'll show you that when I get finished and here we have our first horizontal sashing is stitched to the first row and it came out pretty good I had a couple of hiccups but nothing that pressing can't fix go ahead and finish all of your rows sewing your horizontal sashings to your block rows and end with the horizontal sashing at the bottom of the quilt next we'll cut and piece our borders now I'm going to show you how I cut my lengthwise borders and bindings I, I folded this up so you can see this is a selvage end and it's this wide so it doesn't fit in the camera but this is all selvage edges here and there's four layers and if I move it over here this is the other selvage edge these are the two cut edges here and you see they're uneven which is okay because I have my selvages as even as I can get them going this way here's a fold here and there's a fold up here this is four layers of fabric and the little diagram and the instructions show it a little bit better of how to fold it I'm going to start on one end if you're left-handed you start on the end that works for you so I've got this and I'm going to leave it like this so you can see how I make the cut the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the selvage so here's the selvage is cut off and it's one long piece next I'm going to cut my four and a half inches for the borders and I'm going to cut four of those so each each side of the quilt is a four and a half inch border so here's my here's one and this is measures a little bit over two yards it will cover the length of the side of the quilt so I have four of those these are the borders next we're going to cut the bindings the same way and I'm going to straighten up the edge again now I'll cut four strips for the binding at two and a half inches each Now we have our four binding strips. Now the rest, what we have left is about 15 inches left. That includes the selvage. What you have left here, you'll need to cut your 16 patches for your border corners. That is patch E here. And these are the border corners. So you're making the little uh, triangle parts of the square on point. And we have four square on point units. And that are these right up here. And what we're going to do first is measure the top and bottom of the quilt top. We're measuring this part. We're actually measuring the edge of the sashing row. So we'll measure the top 
and measure the bottom, which includes seam allowances. I think the best tool that any quilter can have is a 120 inch tape measure. So let's measure the top first. And I try to put it on a flat surface like a table and just lay the, lay the measuring tape down and just start measuring. And I grab this part and don't move it and then try to flatten out this and measure again. Measure to the end. So this is about 48 and a quarter. I'll write that down. Now I'll flip this around and measure the bottom. Same way. And it's about 48 and a half. So let's find out what is what should the actual measurement be if we just did everything perfectly. The blocks are 12 inches each, that's 36 inches, plus four of the sashings, that would be 48 and a half inches, including the seam allowances on each side. So I got 48 and a quarter and 48 and a half. So I think I'm just going to measure my borders 48 and a half. Now this is how I cut my border strips. I've got two of my strips layered together and I've trimmed off the raw edge over here to make it even. I put it on a flat surface, as flat as I can get, and then start your measuring. And what I'm doing, I'm just pressing on the, the whatever the surface is. Then I grab this, the the fabric and the tape so it doesn't move from its position. And then I slide this over and make sure all this is flat and then grab it again and slide it over. Now I want 48 and a half and that's right here. I hold my hand here so it won't move. The tape won't move off the fabric and I slide this to 48 and a half, and I'm lining up one edge on my ruler. Then I'm going to cut it. Okay. So this, this is for the top and bottom, remember. Now I'm going to take both of these, and on each side, here I'll just take one, I'm going to sew one of these square on points. So I'll sew it to this side, and then sew another one, to this side and do that for both your both your strips so that's the top and the bottom borders and then we'll just put those aside for now while we attach our side borders now I measured both sides of the quilt and I got 64 and a quarter and 64 and if I was perfect I should have gotten 63 and a half so I'm cutting mine at 64 I cut both of these at 64 inches the same way I did with the top and bottom borders. Now I'm going to show you how I attach borders. I take the border strip and fold it in half. I don't measure it. I fold it, I want to get the exact halfway point and I put a pin there. I take the quilt top and fold it in half and mark the halfway point. If we're lucky, it falls like at this point. So now I'll just put a pin in that halfway point and it's pretty close. I like to put the seams towards the feed dogs. So I'm going to place it like this. Here's my halfway point and then I pick up my border. There's my halfway point that I put the pin. And so I'll match these up, these points. And I'm just going to put it in now. I'm not going to worry about the points yet. Then I go to this one side, doesn't matter which side, I pin this on the corner. And I'm going to pin the, this, this end. And I'm going to look first to make sure that I need to move it over some. And if you can see this part, 
it's slightly moved over, probably about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put this a little bit over as well. So I'm going to line it up with this sashing because remember, the sashings are correct. And so the top part here, I'm going to line it up with the sashing and then put my pins in. So I just evened out the unevenness. Now I take the ends I pinned here and then the center pin and I just sort of estimate the halfway point which is about right here. I'm going to line up the tops and put some pins in. And I just keep going half and half right now I don't worry about the points yet. I just want to get the pins in so I know that it's laying flat here at the top. And then go to this side and find your halfway. It's better if you can just lay this out flat to make sure everything is flat and put some pins in. And then we'll go back and match all of our points. So now here's the middle. Now I'm going to go to this other side and do the same thing on this side. So this one's a little bit closer, but I'm going to line it up with the, the sashings and put my pins in. Okay, now we'll just start doing our halves again, half and half and half. You just don't want to stretch anything. So between these pins, I'll need to pay attention to my points on my square on point. So I'll go back there and just mark the, where the points are so I can take the pin out when I get to it. And so there's another one here and I'll just go through the back like that and then put it put the pin in. I'll know that where the pin entered the fabric that's where the point is. I'm going to do that for all of these points the square on point cornerstones. And once I pin all those and I'll probably add more pins like I'd probably add more pins here just because more more is better then I'll stitch this to the quilt. All right now here is the border is on the side of the quilt, this side, and this side. And I pressed my seams toward the border. It just lays flatter for me because you're not trying to open up these seams here, the pieced seams. So it's just so easy to piece to press that way. Now, these are the top and bottom borders with the, the corners, the square on point in the corners. There's that one side and then the other side. Now we're going to sew this on the top and bottom and we'll pin it the same way we did the sides. We'll fold it in half and put a pin then fold this in half Put a pin and you'll want the quilt top part to the feed dogs. So then we press, put this here, match these, then go to the one side, now this seam line will match up to this seam line because that is our corner. So I'm going, going to keep splitting the dis difference and since these are pressed in opposite directions you can just 
feel with your finger that it's interlocked. And now this is on top, so you'll be able to see where your point is when you're stitching it. And then just put the rest of the pins in the top. And then go back here, uh, your three places, or over here too, where your points are and match your points from the back so you won't stitch over the points. Add the top and bottom borders and then you're finished. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.